What's up, everybody? I'm your guy, Dr. Two, and we are back with another video where the most high is exalted and spirit is explained. Today, we're going to talk about the spiritual meaning of Black History Month. If that is something you're interested in, please stick around. So we're back. I've made me some ramen. You see, I eat it with the chopsticks. I'm a fancy nigga. And I sprinkled a little slap your mama on there. Usually I do Franks, but I wanted to do slap your mama today. So we're going to start with the normal meaning of Black History Month. I made some notes. Let me go ahead and get to them real quick. So ever wonder why the colors red, black, and green and yellow are associated with the celebration of Black History Month? In the United States, the origins can be traced back to the early 20th century, Pan-Africanism and the Ethiopian national flag. The colors are not just decorative, but symbolize so much more. Black History Month was created to focus attention on the contributions of African Americans to the United States. It honors all black people from all periods of US history, from the enslaved people first brought over from, the, from Africa in the early 17th century to African Americans living in the United States today. Black History Month is the time for African Americans to acknowledge key figures from our past and our present. It's an opportunity to spotlight and celebrate the achievement that African Americans have accomplished in the century in the country despite the history of racism and oppression. So let's talk about a couple of Black History's heroes, okay? The textbook heroes. <clears throat> we have George Washington Carver, Shirley Chisholm. Chisholm? I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce it. Bessie Coleman, Benjamin O. Davis Jr. Frederick Douglass, Katherine Johnson. John Lewis, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Thurgood Marshall. When I was in school, I did a piece on Thurgood Marshall. He was a lawyer, one of the first black lawyers. <clears throat> Rosa Parks, Sojourner Truth, Harriet Tubman, Booker T. Washington, Ida B. Wells, and the list goes on and on and on and on. So that was a list of our past history, our past black history. But I made a list of my personal, current black history. Um, activists or leaders that I feel like are contributing to society and today, you know, and have made not just contributing, but have made moves that has um, set a lot of other people up to better their future and just open doors for a lot of other people. So um, this isn't in any special order. Um, the list goes on and on and on. But these are the 10 that came to my mind like that. So of course, we have T.S. Madison. All right. Now, we all know T.S. Madison uh, started off as a porn star and now she's like a social media mogul. And I feel like T.S. Madison is a part of black history because she's opened so many doors for black, not only LGBT, but black trans women, you know. Black trans women have been looked down and get the short end of the stick all the time. You know, we're killed. They are killed the most. They're... um. 
just <sighs> not really looked at as a person and not really, you know, not really um, accepted in mainstream society. So I appreciate T.S. Madison for letting it be known that trans women are human as well. They have feelings, they have, um, and can contribute to society, okay? I don't know. I can go on and on and on about the beauty and the blessing of T.S. Madison. But, you know, if you don't know who she is, look her up now. Look all these people up. RuPaul. We all know the doors RuPaul has opened. RuPaul has set up so many um, drag queens, have taken so many drag queens off the street, have taken so many drag queens off of the, out of the club, and has given them a platform to maximize their talent, okay? Beyonce, we know for so long that Beyonce was like praised and looked up to as the as the trophy black woman, okay? Um, not only just her beauty, but her class. She can dance, you know, just different things that she kept people, women inspired and uplifted, and she kept she kept a crown on the uh on the vision visual of a black woman. You know what I'm saying? Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj has contributed to black rap, you know? So many black rappers before her just was talking about sex or, you know, only made it so far. But when Nicki Minaj came out in her era, it's like she came out um, telling women, you don't have to be the whore of the group. You don't have to, you know, suck dick. You can be getting your pussy ate. You know what I'm saying? Sucking dick is good, but you can be getting pleasured and pleased, okay? She came out here like rapping like men, like, you know what I mean? Like rapping like a woman, but with the strength of a man. Usually if a woman is rapping like a man, it's giving man. She wasn't giving man. She was rapping like a woman, but it was giving like balls. It was giving kahunas. It was giving, you know what I mean? So Nicki Minaj just kind of changed rap for females. And she made, she opened doors for a lot of females and made them want to jump back out here. She made rap look easy, to be honest. She made a lot of females feel like they could do it. And in result, it made a lot of, you know, millionaires. It got a lot of women off the street, a lot of women in their bag. Um, so, Lamel Plummer. If you guys don't know who Lamel Plummer is, he is the owner of Zeus Network. So, y'all can talk all the shit y'all want to about Zeus Network. But Zeus Network is getting a bag. Getting a bag and open door, opening doors for other people to get a bag. Like Natalie Nunn. Josh, when her name is. And all these other shows. So, this is my current list of black history, okay? Of course. Of course, we all know Barack o, Barack and Michelle Obama goes down in the history books for being the first black president, okay? When people saw, when young black men and young black women saw Barack Obama in office, they finally knew and finally had the confirmation that they could be president. Their young black face could be seen in the White House, okay? The White House. I digress. When young black girls saw Barack and Michelle Obama, they saw that, okay, me and my husband can become president. We can run this. We can get to the top of the food chain, okay? Um, Cardi B. Now... I was conflicted with putting Cardi B on here because I am a Barb, I'm a Nicki fan, but I'm also, you know, Cardi fan too. I love both of them. I believe in unity. I'm the doctor, so I'm not going to pick and choose. I believe in we all contribute in our own special way. And that's what Cardi did. Cardi was one of the first people to turn reality television into a bag bag. Like they was getting a bag, but they was still losing a bag and having to come back. Cardi B took that and she flipped that and she skyrocketed to the top. And now we know Cardi B for more than just reality television. And what she brought to it was she showed people, but especially women, that you can be yourself. Nicki Minaj, she kept her crown on, you know, she wanted women to be royalty. She wanted you to know, like, don't get on the floor for no nigga. Don't get on your knees for no nigga. But Cardi B was kind of like fun and open with it. She was like getting on her knees, sucking dick, farting. She was saying that you could still 
release that um those morals or how, how can i say it? you can release that that prideful stuff and just have fun and be yourself and be natural and just be you know yourself and still make it out here so cardi b made it comfortable for little black girls in the hood that felt like they can't couldn't quite live up to the queendom royaltiness that Nicki minaj standards were um that they could just still be themselves and be someone you know what i'm saying they could still make it just being themselves farting sucking dicks being a stripper sticking bottles up their pussy and all of that so i give it to cardi b okay she has influenced a lot of black girls to get out here and do better do better with themselves live better try try to do better you know what i mean kurt franklin we all know who Kurt Franklin is. And if you don't know, you should know. Take your ass to church. Kurt Franklin was one of the first black um, musicians, to my knowledge, that kind of blurred the line of, like, R&B, hip-hop, rap, and gospel. He made, like, the young kids in the street, the young kids in the hood, want to listen to gospel music. It wasn't just slow gospel rhymes and rhythms you know he amped it up he made it hip-hop he like put gospel words to a hip-hop beat type type and um he really put gospel back into the youth into the into the community into the hood so part of real really big part of black history okay without kurt franklin who knows where um urban gospel music would be Maxi, some of you guys might not know, but if you're from Indianapolis, Indiana, if you're from Nat Town, three one seven seven, y'all should know who Maxi is. Okay, Maxi took a t-shirt line, all right, Nat Town, and turned it around, and now my boy is doing big things. He has, I think, a couple of locations, and one of his locations is in the Lafayette Square Mall. Okay, I watched Maxi come up from a couple of t-shirts from in his trunk or whatever to like doing it big right now and having a lot of storefronts. So Maxi here in Indiana where I live, um, he's inspired a lot of young men to get to a bag and know and understand that they can put the drugs down. If you can weigh up some drugs, if you can bag up these drugs, you can bag up these t-shirts. If you can count this money, if you can count these bags, you can count these t-shirts. If you can get it in the streets, you can really get it professionally. So big ups to Maxi for doing that. Last but not least, we have Alonzo Herndon, Hernandon, Herndon. And he's one of the first black barbers to become a millionaire fresh out of Atlanta. I have a little story that I would like to read, a little background story I would like to read of him. And um, let's get into it. Oh, these noodles is good, y'all. I'm trying to savor the last little bite. Give me some more. Give me some more. This is how I be licking my nigga. I'm just sticking my finger in there and I'm about give me some more. Give me some more. Gotta stick your finger in there. Give me some more. What the wall tastes like? Give me some more. You know, I'm just playing a little forgive me. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> we got a quick little read. <clears throat> and then I have a video for you that I would like to play. Atlanta's first black millionaire started out as a barber. Alonzo Herndon is best known as the first African-American entrepreneur from Atlanta to become a millionaire. He was born in 1858 into slavery to a black mother and white father who was likely his mother's slave master. He went on to be a sharecropper and in 1878, he trained to become a barber. This eventually created an opportunity for him to own and operate three large barbershops in Atlanta, in the Atlanta area that served prominent white men. But his path to becoming a millionaire began in the 1900s when he became a founding member of Booker T. Washington's National Negro Business League. In 1905, one of his main barbershops was destroyed in the Atlanta race riot. So Herndon started investing in real estate and eventually purchased a failing mutual aid association that he turned into the Atlanta Family Life Insurance Company. 
That company was so successful that it expanded into several other markets, including Florida, Kansas, Kentucky, Missouri, Tennessee, Texas, and many other states. His employees sold the company's low-cost industrial insurance door-to-door -door at a time when perhaps they were the only black men passing through a southern town wearing suit and ties. Sadly, Hernandez died in 1927, but his son, Norris, took over the company. In modern day, the company is still in business and is the only and is the only the only there's a typo here and is one of the only african-american owned and privately held stock companies in the country with compatibilities that capabilities that include personal and business insurance reinsurance of group life insurance and dental benefits to date his mansion built by black artisans in 1910 sits next to Morris Brown College and is listed on the National Register of Historic Homes on Diamond Hill. All right, so there was a little read about Alonzo Herndon. That is amazing. It, it is beautiful to see our black people becoming millionaires. And guess who's next? Guess who's next? Guess who's next? Hallelujah. All right, so I wanted to talk a little bit about how Spirit feels about Black History Month, all right? And this might be the segment that you might get a little uncomfortable. So if you're wishy-washy, if you're iffy, if you can't listen with your heart, then leave now because, um, you know, I just, I'm going to be honest. We're going to be honest here on the Dr. Two's platform, you know, right or wrong. We're going to be honest and we're going to leave room to be corrected and leave room for conversation and discussion. Okay. So. Spirit feels like this is a fool. There should be no such thing as a Black History Month. Okay. Black History Month was only created solely because there was a slavery. All right. Slavery should have never happened, okay? When the Bible spoke of slavery, we can go so many ways with this, but when the Bible spoke of slavery, it, did, it, it didn't mean slavery as far as owning the person. Slavery was a form of work, okay? You owned the work. You deserved the work. You were entitled to the work because I'm entitled to my payment, but you're not entitled to me. They started owning and enslaving people and feel like they owned people and beating and killing people, and these things were against the law, okay? Um, now, a piece of me feels like this Bible was manipulated and, you know, interpreted to keep blacks enslaved i don't really feel like this book was completely from god okay but we can go somewhere else with that we can talk about that some, another time on bible study but this is about black history month okay so i feel like but you know the bible is so such a prominent tool of black culture and black history that's why it comes up so much okay um because I don't want to offend anyone that might be Bible-thumping Christians when I say Spirit doesn't like Black History Month and this should not even be a situation, okay? Now, granted, like I say a lot, Spirit has a way of turning something evil good, making the best out of a bad situation. That is what God is. That is what love is, okay? So even though... Um, slavery happened now we have black history month okay but i want to make sure that black history month is thought about looked at talked about and exercised in the proper ways that's why we have this video here today so let's not just talk about the peacemakers of the black culture less of black history of the or the people that contributed you know because there's a lot of people that that died that were slain that you know had their blood were shed you know, so these people could live, okay? So let's talk about them as well, all right? Let's talk about them as well. And um, let's make sure during this month, we are um, acknowledging, encouraging, and teaching the children, okay? Because these textbooks are only going to say so much and go so far. All right. So I need you as a parent, if you are a parent, if you are an uncle, an aunt, if you are just a friend, okay, I need you to make sure you're doing your research on black history so you could pass on the proper knowledge because we can't just keep repeating 
what we've heard. We have to dig down and dig deep and use our own brain and discernment and make sure we're teaching our children what needs to be taught. So I'm going to go ahead and play a segment from uh, my guy Lee over at Vice, and I'll be right back with you. Hi, I'm Lee, Vice's resident black guy. It's February, and I think we should get rid of Black History Month. Oh! And before you finish writing me that death threat, please just let me explain. It's almost as if people have forgotten and are remembering your person again. Like, oh, hey, look, there's a black guy in this office. We should hear what he has to say because it's Black History Month. It's also a time for racists to be reminded they still hate you just because you exist and because people that look like you appear on TV just a bit more. And personally, I think it's all because of the ways that we treat Black History Month as a society. I mean, think about it. When is White History Month? Why don't we have a White History Month? I'll tell you why we don't have a White History Month. It's because every month of every year is White History Month. Every book, every biopic, basically every day celebrates White History, and that's the reason we have Black History Month to begin with. Black History Month was started in 1916 by black historian Carter G. Woodson. Woodson wanted the study of black history and the accomplishments of black people to be highlighted and appreciated in both academia and in wider American society. So in a combined effort with the Association for the Study of African American Life and History, he started Negro History Week. 50 years later during the Civil Rights Movement, student groups on college campuses would petition that that week be expanded to a month and finally, in 1976, roughly 60 years after it was started, a sitting president would formally acknowledge Black History Month for the first time. Nowadays, because virtue signaling is really important on social media, we make a huge deal about brown faces for 28 days and then ignore them for the rest of the year, creating this dynamic of resentment among racists and disingenuous empathy among woke whites like, oh, it's Black History Month. Why don't we all listen to Cardi B and go watch Black Panther? Let's look at what's been taught during Black History Month, because it certainly isn't all Black History, since, you know, that would clearly take more than the 28 days of the shortest month of the year. Really, it seems to only be the stuff that doesn't make white people feel uncomfortable. I would argue Black History Month isn't really about black history. It's about only teaching the pacification of black people. You only hear about the good ones. You hear politicians talk about Frederick Douglass. Some people like Donald Trump talk about him like he's still alive. You might see something about Jackie Robinson or a Google doodle about Langston Hughes or James Baldwin. But where are the ad campaigns using the likeness of Huey P. Newton or Angela Davis? Where are the primetime specials featuring speeches by Adam Clayton Powell Jr.? Why don't we see big budget studio films about the assassination of Fred Hampton? Why is it that Black History Month only ever seems to revolve around feel good stories of the civil rights movement and things that took place after slavery. Teach America about the atrocities committed under the banner of slavery. Teach them about the nearly 3,500 black people that were lynched in this country from 1882 to 1968. Why don't we know about the terrorist attack on Black Wall Street in Oklahoma during one of the earliest mass displays of black wealth and prosperity in America? If you're going to keep Black History Month a thing, then don't sanitize it. We still live in a world where we love to talk about Martin Luther King Jr.'s life and gloss over his death. He was assassinated. He was killed for resisting oppression and injustice and for trying to make the world just a little bit more livable for black people. Saying he died overlooks a significant part of history. If you're going to pretend like black people's lives only matter for 28 days out of the year, at least pretend their deaths mattered as well. Because if we don't reach further back into black history, then we're not teaching black history. We're teaching American history as white people would like to remember it. And if we aren't learning about all black history beyond the surface, then what are we learning? Other than the fact that black people are relevant once a year, like Santa Claus on Christmas. Has BHM taught America about the accomplishments of black Americans? Yes. When it comes to improving the lives of black people everywhere, what has Black History Month done on a concrete, tangible level? Has Black History Month improved the ways that the media portrays black men? Did Black History Month protect the name, story, or reputation of Trayvon Martin? Did it allow Eric Gardner to breathe? Did it allow Emmett Till to live out his childhood? Has it raised the careers of black people in the least racially diverse industries? 
Has it defeated racist stereotypes that people still believe in American society? Because I still can't walk home at night without making white people nervous when I'm behind them on the sidewalk. So you know what? No. You can keep your Black History Month to yourself, America, because I don't want it. Don't relegate my history to the shortest month of the year. Black history is American history, and it should be taught as such. And if we want more unity and to come together as a people, then we should treat black people, our personhood, and our history like it matters every day of every month and not once a year. We don't need Black History Month anymore. We just need you to treat my history like it's also yours. Because it is. And we are back. Wow, wow, wow. He said that way better than I could. Thank you for the help, Mr. Lee. The doctor appreciates you. So what should we do during Black History Month? In closing, I would say support Black-owned businesses. And if you can't support a Black-owned business, just support a Black person. Be a listening ear, okay? If you see someone Black needs something, they need a ride, they need a dollar, give it to them. They need a burger, give it to them. But overall, support Black people, support black owned businesses okay every day i would say take one dollar five dollars ten dollars twenty dollars a hundred dollars whatever you can do a two hundred dollars whatever you can do take that money and say okay this is my budget for black history month and i'm going to donate every day to a black owned business and i mean you can do the same one over and over again but i would prefer for you to donate to different ones because it's a lot of black owned businesses out here um that need your help you got to understand black people have been held back Okay, for so many years that, yes, we do have more black billionaires than ever before now, you know, but um, it should be more, you know, and there will be more thanks to you. All right. So I appreciate you for listening and watching this video. I love you so much. If you haven't already, please make sure you thumbs up this video and you um, subscribe to the channel. So until I see you again, make sure you're always good to yourself. Is there something on your mind? Have you and a family member or spouse recently had a disagreement or fight? Are you heartbroken? Experiencing loneliness? Lost a loved one? Need some advice? I am Dr. Two. And I'd love to help. Write me at itsdr2 at gmail.com and I'll answer your questions with the best advice I have. Make sure you're subscribed to my YouTube channel so you don't miss the healing. Ask Dr. Two, where the most high is exalted and spirit is explained. We now have It's Dr. Two merch. Dressed to express your glory. We have our remake of your favorite, What Would Jesus Do? WWJD. Skull King EST 1989 and my exiting slogan, be good to yourself. These stylish inspirational pieces are great gifts for yourself and someone else. Be good to yourself and let your soul glow. It's Dr. Two